be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Good morning. It is Wednesday, June the 23rd, 2021, and this is Cafe Devo. Coming to you almost live from First Congregational Church in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. I'm Pastor Steve Wood hanging out here with my pal Bugsy, and I hope your Wednesday is going well. We're halfway through the week, and this is day 18 of our Purpose Driven Summer Emphasis. As you know, we are reading from the book, The Purpose Driven Life. It is written by Pastor Rick Warren, copyright 2002, Zondervan Publishing. We have some copies of the book available here in the church if you wish to purchase a physical copy. However, if you'd like to download one or order one, you can also do that through Amazon.com. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Each one of you is part of the body of Christ, and you were chosen to live together in peace. Life is meant to be shared. God intends for us to experience life together. The Bible calls this shared experience fellowship. Today, however, the word has lost some of its biblical meaning. Fellowship now often refers to casual conversations or socials or food and fun. The question, where do you fellowship, sometimes means, where do you attend church? Stay after for fellowship can mean wait after for refreshments. Fellowship is so much more than just showing up at services. It is experiencing life together. It includes unselfish loving, honest sharing, practical serving, sacrificial giving, sympathetic comforting, and all the other one another commands found in the New Testament. In fellowship, people experience authenticity because fellowship is not superficial surface level chit chat. It is genuine heart to heart, sometimes gut level sharing. It happens when people get honest about who they are and what is happening in their lives. They share their hurts, reveal their feelings, confess their failures, disclose their doubts, admit their fears, acknowledge their weaknesses, and ask for help in prayer. It is only when we become open about our lives that we experience real fellowship. The Bible says if we live in the light as God is in the light, we can share fellowship with each other. If we say we have no sin, we're fooling ourselves. Of course, being authentic requires both courage and humility. It means facing our fear of exposure, rejection, and being hurt again. Why would anyone take such a risk? Because it is the only way to grow spiritually and be emotionally healthy. The Bible says, make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. We may only grow by taking risks, and the most difficult risk of all is to be honest with ourselves and with others. In fellowship, people experience mutuality. Mutuality is the art of giving and receiving. It is depending on each other. The Bible says the way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church, every part dependent on every other part. Mutuality is the heart of fellowship, building reciprocal relationships, sharing responsibilities and helping each other. Paul said, I want us to help each other with the faith we have. Your faith will help me, and my faith will help you. All of us are more consistent in our faith when others walk with us and encourage us. The Bible commands mutual accountability, mutual encouragement, mutual serving, and mutual honoring. Over 50 times in the New Testament, we are commanded to do different tasks to one another and each other. The Bible says make every effort 
to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. You are not responsible for everyone in the body of Christ, but you are responsible to them. God expects you to do whatever you can to help them. In fellowship, people experience sympathy. Sympathy is not giving advice or offering quick cosmetic help. Sympathy is entering in and sharing the pain of others. It says, I understand what you're going through and what you feel is neither strange nor crazy. Now, today we call this empathy, but the Bible uses the word sympathy. The Bible says, as holy people, be sympathetic, kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Sympathy meets two fundamental human needs, the need to be understood and the need to have your feelings validated. Every time you understand and affirm someone's feelings, you build fellowship. The problem is that we are often in so much of a hurry to fix things that we do not have time to sympathize with people, or maybe we're preoccupied with our own hurts. Self-pity dries up sympathy for others. There are different levels of fellowship, and each is appropriate at different times. The simplest level of fellowship is the fellowship of sharing or the fellowship of studying God's word together. A deeper, le deeper level is the fellowship of serving, as when we minister together. Uh, the deepest, most intense level is the fellowship of suffering, where we enter into each other's pain and grief and carry each other's burden. The Christians who understand this level best are those around the world who are being persecuted, despised, and even martyred for their faith. The Bible commands share each other's troubles and problems, and in this way obey the law of Christ. It is in the times of deep crisis, grief, and doubt that we need each other the most. When circumstances crush us to the point where our faith falters, that's when we need believing friends the most. We need a group of friends to have faith in God for us, to pull us through. In a group, the body of Christ is real and tangible, even when God seems distant. This is what Job desperately needed during his suffering. He cried out, a despairing man should have the devotion of his friends, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. In fellowship, people experience mercy. Fellowship is a place of grace where mistakes are not rubbed in, but rubbed out. Fellowship happens when mercy wins over justice. We all need mercy because we all stumble and fall and require help getting back on track. We need to offer mercy to each other and be willing to receive it from each other. God says when people sin, you should forgive them and comfort them so they won't give up in despair. You can't have fellowship without forgiveness. That's why God warns, never hold grudges, because bitterness and resentment always destroy fellowship. Because we're imperfect, sinful people, we inevitably hurt each other when we're together for long enough. Sometimes we hurt each other unintentionally and sometimes intentionally. But either way, it takes massive amounts of mercy and grace to create and maintain fellowship. The Bible says you must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. God's mercy to us is the motivation for showing mercy to others. Remember, you will never be asked to forgive someone else more than God has already forgiven you. Now, many people are reluctant to show mercy because they do not understand the difference between trust and forgiveness. Forgiveness is letting go of the past. Trust has to do with future behavior. Forgiveness must be immediate, whether or not a person asks for it. Trust must be rebuilt over time. Trust requires a track record. If someone hurts you repeatedly, you are commanded by God to forgive them instantly, but you are not expected to trust them immediately, and you are not expected to continue allowing them to hurt you. They must earn your trust 
by proving they have changed over time. There are many other benefits you will experience in being a part of a group, a church, committed to real fellowship. It is an essential part of your Christian life that you must not overlook. And tomorrow, we will look at what it takes to create this kind of community with other believers. You were created for community, and you need others in your life. Once again, Father, we thank you for fellowship. We thank you for this day, for a new day, for the opportunities that it brings. We pray, Father, that you would go with us, that you would make us ever mindful of your presence, that you would show us your way, that you would guard our thoughts, watch over our words, direct our path. Bless us in this, Father, and may we represent you well, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Wednesday edition of Cafe Devo, day 18 of our Purpose Driven Summer Emphasis. I hope it's been a blessing to you. For now, this is Pastor Steve Wood signing off. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.